All right. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Thumbs up. All right. So we're ready to get started. Um, we're going to talk about tonight a very, very important topic, and that is the topic of toxicity. So uh, I think most of the people on the line already know who I am. I'm Dr. Nick Leverett, and this is my beautiful bride, Dr. Missy Leverett. And uh, today we're going to jump right in. So before we get started, I want to uh, just make sure that the people that are on the line are in the right place. So we want to ask uh, or for you to figure out rather, are you in the right place? So the first question I want to ask you is, are you experiencing fatigue? Are you tired? If you are, you're in the right place. This is the place for you. Uh, second question is, do you experience insomnia? Do you have difficulty sleeping? Or do you have fibromyalgia? If you've ever been told that you have fibromyalgia, or if you yourself think that you may have fibromyalgia, this is absolutely the right place for you. Uh, how about autoimmune disease or hormone imbalances? If that's the case for you, you're definitely in the right place. If you've ever had any type of fertility issues or had uh, headaches, migraines, or tension headaches, this is the place for you. This is definitely the seminar for you. Uh, or how about this one? If your kids are running around like crazy kids, hyperactive, this is the right place for you and your kids. So again, Dr. Nick and Dr. Missy, and we're gonna kick it off here tonight. Um, I hope that I'm, I can share my screen with you. Can everyone see the screen okay? Thumbs up if you can. Yes, that thumbs up, Robin, yeah? Okay, cool. So um, the, the thing that I wanna get right off the bat established with everybody is that toxicity absolutely causes disease. There is no question about that. Um, obesity is running rampant. It's prevalent among children and adolescents, and it's tripled since 1980. And I was just reading a study the other day and listening to NPR on my work, way to work last week, and they confirmed this next stat on autism. Uh, autism used to be not very uh, prevalent in the United States. But the latest stat is that one in 88 live births, the kid is diagnosed with autism. Guys, that's a pretty staggering statistic. Um, 9.6 million children take psychotropic drugs, and that was in 2007. I mean, many, many years ago, 9.6 million children are taking psychotropic drugs. According to um, a study that, that was also recently published, it shows that one in three American adults struggle with insomnia. One in 11 children have asthma. There's a study put out by the Journal of the American Medical Association that showed that when a kid takes an antibiotic before the age of six months, it increases the incidences of that kid being diagnosed with asthma by more than 40%. So that's one round of antibiotics to a kid before they get six months old, increases the likelihood of that kid getting uh, asthma, even as a child, by more than 40%. So what do most kids get whenever they get an ear infection? What is the, rec the standard treatment recommended treatment for that kid? And it's almost always some form of an antibiotic. Female epidemics is off the chain, hormone and thyroid disease. Dr. Miss is going to talk a lot about that today. Um, toxicity is a big problem in the world today. We live in a very, very toxic world. Environmental toxicity in is increasing from generation to generation. And you'll see why that is because lots of chemicals are being uh, utilized through the uh, FDA and in, in the food industry as well. So it's just creating what we call a bioaccumulative effect. In fact, in, in 2009, the CDC made a report on, uh, on how this is impacting the total body burden. Since 1999, the CDC has measured 219 chemicals in people's blood and urine. Guys, this is your blood and my blood that's being tested and it's shown that over 200 chemicals are in our blood. 
75 of these chemicals are new and they've never been seen before. And then down here at the bottom of the screen is a list of what some of those chemicals are. And Dr. Miss is gonna uh, hit that tonight as well. So where are all these toxins coming from? There's what's called exogenous toxins as well as endogenous toxins. So exogenous toxins are toxins that come from the outside environment, from outside of our bodies. And here's an example of some of those. Prescription medications uh, can be an, a, is a, an exogenous toxin. And the environment itself, the things that are floating around in the air can be a form uh, or elicit some form of an exogenous toxin. Or how about the things that we put in our bodies from a dietary perspective? Those are, uh, can be exogenous toxins. Dangerous fat soluble toxins are also forms of outside toxins. And then there's what's called endogenous toxins. These are toxins that occur as a result of the metabolic process. We're gonna hit on frankenfood. So when we hear frankenfood, these are foods that aren't foods, guys. So the FDA has approved, I mean, the Food and Drug Administration has approved 3,000 artificial food additives. This is in the food that you're eating and we're eating that's approved by a regulatory agency. They're in additives, they're in preservatives, and they're in food colorants. In fact, the average person ingests sometimes between 140 and 150 pounds of additives every single year. So did you guys hear what I said? Pounds of additives every single year. So the question is, where are all of these additives going? Like they're going in and they're not just going out. So where are they right now? In fact, what are those additives doing inside of our bodies right now is a more appropriate question. So before I get too deep into uh, what we're going to talk about today, I, will like, I would like to let you guys know that if you have a question, type your question in the chat. We can see it right in front of us and uh, we'll address that question while we're doing the presentation tonight, okay? So environmental toxins, according to the um, Environmental Protection Agency, our indoor environment is two to five times more toxic than our outdoor environment. So now, about a year ago, something called COVID-19 hit the world. And what COVID-19 caused a lot of us to do is to not go outside. In fact, we've been encouraged for well over 12 months to not go outside, to stay close to the ones that live in our homes. And what this shows us is that according to the Environmental Protection Agency, it is more toxic indoors than it is outdoors. Indoor air measurements have been found to be 100 times more polluted than outside. One thing that we're going to um, cover today, guys, is we're going to show you specifically, Dr. Nissi is in just a second, where all of these toxins are coming from. And I tell you, they're around us. They're around us every single day. And in fact, most of us don't even know that we're being surrounded by toxins uh, on a daily basis. So the toxic top five, number one is medication, prescription and non-prescription. Number two, in fact, that's, the, that's where most toxicity comes from. It's most pre prevalent is prescription and non-prescription medication. Number two is household products. These are our cleaning products. The third one on the list is Teflon cookware, non-stick cookware. We think that it's good and convenient. In fact, there was a, a class action law lawsuit that was against the Teflon cookware industry in recent years. Fourth on the list is tap water. If we're drinking water out the tap, guys, we're poisoning ourselves. And then last are mold and biotoxins. So I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Missy here. Guys, make sure you stick around for the entire presentation because we have a couple of gifts for you at the end. Dr. Missy, take it away. Please let me know if I'm not speaking as loudly as my husband. I don't do a good job projecting my voice always. So if you don't mind, I'll lean in and chat with you about tonight's topic. 
because it's a super important one. We're talking about some things that are highly avoidable, okay? And we'll try to tease those out tonight. But some of the other things are unavoidable. So if we live the best lifestyle possible, if we eat the cleanest foods, if we avoid some of the things that we will discuss this evening, there's going to be some things that are absolutely unavoidable in our environment inside the home and outside the home today. So this is something that all of us need, okay? So let's move on. And I'm gonna learn how to do that. Sure. Okay, great. So the number one exposure that we have to toxins is gonna to be medication. Why is this? It's because so many Americans are on medications and in the future that will increase. You know, the goal for a pharmaceutical company I heard one time was that every, every American be on at least 15 medications. Now that's just not elderly Americans, middle-aged Americans, that's all Americans. So even your children are being targeted for that kind of um, prescription attack, okay? Because everything that we have going on, um, some of which is a normal adaptation to maybe a lifestyle that we could really do some work on or um, just other things that can be normal processes that we may need, may need support with, just not necessarily pharmaceutical support. All of that is going to be, you know, always being targeted from that one direction, okay? So we're on a lot of drugs. And in the next slide, I'll talk to you about where those drugs go and why that's continually a problem, that, that cycle um, of taking in the medication, excreting it, what happens to that, and then being reintroduced to that is a huge cycle of toxicity in our lives. So one miracle cure of uh, once, Okay, let me stop reading the slide. Pause, I'm gonna stop reading the slide. So if I give information to you that's not on the slide and you have a, a question about that, please just send the question in on the chat. I'm really horrible about reading and talking at the same time, so I'll just talk. So anyway, um, when we're talking about medications being the problem, and I'll follow up with the slides um, regarding uh, tap water. See, what happens is that when we take in medication, or when we take, yes, when we take in medication, we have our own detox system. So that's liver, kidney, digestive tract. All of those things filter everything that we put into our mouth, okay? So when it does that, those things are excreted. So for example, a lot of uh, medications are excreted in the urine. We're going to urinate that out. It's going to end up in the water, okay? And the water is filtered, but it is not cleared for those medication byproducts unless you have a whole house water filtration system, okay? And most of us don't have that, but that is a great thing to look into if you're inclined to do that. Um, that would be the absolute best water quality that you can have because even drinking uh, bottled water is gonna be problematic and we'll get into the whys of that uh, here in just a minute. You can look at for me. Okay, so as I was saying, medication, uh, it gets into our water supply and it's not very well filtered out. As you know, in like Flint, Michigan and some other places, they're having trouble filtering out even some heavy metals. So how much more are they having an issue filtering out medications? Yes, most um, systems are not set up to filter at that level. So guess what happens when you don't drink filtered water? Your body becomes the filter. You're the filter. Your liver, your kidneys, filter, okay, the best that they can, all right, because most of us do have a challenge in our digestive tract. If you've ever experienced constipation, if you've ever experienced um, food reactions, if you've ever been on any antibiotics or your children, um, if you ever had uh, like immune or hormone issues, more than likely you've got a gut issue. And if you have a challenged gut, then you have a challenged ability to filter. Okay, so all the more problems this will cause. So in addition to the medicine byproducts inside of the water, what's also there is um, disinfection byproducts. I was trying to get that right in my head. So what do they disinfect the water with? Mostly chlorine, right? How does that get back out of the water? Okay, some of it evaporates. And that's a problem for us as well. Because how many of us love hot showers? 
right? While we're taking that hot shower, as a matter of fact, the hotter it is, the more chlorine we're exposed to because that, that chlorine is going to become part of the air. So we're taking that in and that's increasing our toxic load, okay? But when you drink it, it's the same thing. You're taking in those chlorine byproducts and your digestive tract is having to work um, to your detoxification system to try and detox that chlorine and some of those other chemical or disinfection byproducts, okay? Um, the longer you're in the shower, the more you're gonna be exposed to these. So keep that in mind. This is a good, good reason why we wanna take shorter showers. It's not only good for the environment because we're saving water, but also because the longer you're in there, the longer you're exposed to these toxic uh, disinfection byproducts and, um, and some of these other things that we talked about that are in the bottle. In fact, it says here on the slide that a 15 minute shower is equal to drinking eight glasses of this water, of polluted water, okay? So this is why, and here's a little tip, if you're at a restaurant or even if you're at home and you don't have any kind of filtration system set up, one thing you can do, Nick, if you're at a restaurant and you have your tap water, let it sit, let it sit for five or 10 minutes. What's going to happen is that the chlorine and the fluoride will evaporate out of that drink. And for the most part, it's going to be a lot healthier for you. But at home, you definitely want filtration. Um, if you can't do the whole house system, one great thing is um, I told my friend, Mr. Brown, about a uh, Berkey water filter is a great one. That's a countertop version. You can do reverse osmosis systems. Um, and there are actually some really good ones on Amazon that you can order and just simply install at your kitchen sink. Um, for a uh, point of use uh, water filtration. That's not going to affect your shower. Um, but like I said, turn that heat down just a little bit. It's better for your skin and hair anyway. And try to keep it short. All right. The, the next thing that we'll talk about as far as toxic exposure, and this is kind of what you were hitting on before about indoor air quality being so poor. And a lot of the poor indoor air quality is due to, again, disinfection. Okay, especially now, we're so afraid of COVID, we're spraying everything down with Lysol. What is Lysol? When I hear Lysol, I hear aerosol. Right. Okay, so we're spraying it. Um, the disinfection chemical is coming out, but other things are coming out. Propellants, okay, um, those aerosols, and, they, and you breathe them in. Right. In fact, I just heard a study. If you clean your kitchen with regular household chemicals for 30 minutes, you increase the toxic air in your house by 100%, okay? That's pretty steep. So a lot of us are now spending a lot of time cleaning and we're using harsh chemicals to do so. Um, honestly, I was just looking at the veracity of peroxide uh, with COVID-19 uh, germs and it's, it's looking really good. You know, in the future, we may have issues with the disinfecting products that we use today because these bugs are growing smarter. You know, we call them super bugs. So people are moving more towards essential oils, more, you know, back to where we came from, like vinegar and water solutions, peroxide. Those all work really, really well. And um, the germs can't see them coming. So it's a really great thing um, to see studies that are looking at um, how well essential oils do, for example, on, on some of these super bugs. They're actually performing better than some of these antimicrobials, okay? Uh, not to mention we're putting it on our hands all the time. So we really do, and I understand that's really unavoidable right now. We've got to keep our hands clean in public. Um, you know, we're not just always able to wash hands with warm water and soap. So we've got to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to support our detox systems. And that's really what we're getting at today. So for that, you want to check basically everything. Uh, check the things that you use for disinfection. The things that you put on your body, wash your hair with, shampoos, lotions, anything that comes into direct contact with your skin um, is going to be a big one. Remember, your skin is the largest organ of your body. Anything you put on your skin, you're going to definitely absorb. It's going to be in your bloodstream. So you want to keep that in mind. Also, things like toothpaste. You know, um, I order my toothpaste on Amazon. It's a great toothpaste. I wish I had brought it with me. One day we'll do a video on like... Um, tips, you know, like product tips, but you know, it's out there. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this now. So you just, um, you know, look at the ingredients the best you can uh, and try to go for the ones that are the most natural. 
you know what I found interesting when researching for this this workshop that toothpaste there are some toothpastes that have what's called propylene glycol in it which is the same ingredient that's in antifreeze and antifreeze is stuff that we'll put in our carbs to keep our radiators from freezing so I thought that was very interesting it's also found in some other products like deodorant lotion and many processed foods and What's most interesting about that is that propylene glycol has been linked to kidney damage, to liver abnormalities, as well as uh, Im improper cell growth and other deficiencies that affect the nervous system and other parts of the body. So I, I thought that was really cool that antifreeze can be found in toothpaste. So I think it would be a really good idea if we did do uh, a product, show the products that we can use as alternatives. Yeah, stay tuned for that. That would for sure be a great idea because I know a lot of you are you know like okay so you say these things are bad for me so what should i use so that's a great question but just know that the questions are the really great things to have the answers you can get um the answers are out there there are a lot of people having these conversations mm -hmm. and if you find a great uh, reputable person to to look into some of the things that they're doing you can get some great ideas behind replacing some of these things and reducing your risk of parkinson's alzheimer's cancer um, ADHD in your kids' birth defects. Yeah. Some of these um, chemicals are, are really indicative of birth defects or home, hormone issues. If you're trying to get pregnant or know someone who's going to get pregnant, weight, mm -hmm. weight gain. Um, you know, you know, with toxins, because they affect so many systems in the body, they really just have such a far-reaching um, effect on the body. There really isn't a condition that we can say that doesn't have some kind of link to toxins. Like another one is sodium lauryl sulfate, or SLS. This is found a lot in things like soap or uh, shampoo. Your also, shampoo. toothpaste again has sodium lauryl sulfate. This is a a, a degreaser, and research is showing from the Journal of the American College of Toxicology that the soaps that we use can lead to heart problems, can lead to liver problems, because the liver is what's detoxifying all this. It's kind of like the body's uh, processing center can lead to brain problems. This SLS has been found in residual amounts in, in the brain, the lungs, and the liver. So want to be want to be very careful about the the soaps and the other cosmetic products that we we're uh, utilizing as well. Yes, and don't sleep on the fragrance. Even though fragrance can be at the bottom of the label where it says less than two percent, remember those can have as up to two hundred ingredients per fragrance. And those really can do a number on your hormones. So do watch that as well. Yes. well we talked about Teflon cookware you mentioned before. Right. And this is a biggie. Anything nonstick is really a no-no because as you're heating up these things, they actually release chemicals into your food. Okay? So the best way to stay absolutely chemical-free when you're cooking is going to be go old school. Use that um, cast iron skillet. Use your uh, ceramic coated uh, cast iron skillet, your Dutch oven. Oh, they're all perfect. Glass, Pyrex, those are going to be great. Avoid cooking in plastic. Avoid nonstick. So real quick, Dr. Missy, we have a question that just came in. Someone wanted to know what was the name of the toothpaste alternative? The toothpaste, it's an Ayurvedic toothpaste that they sell on Amazon. I auto ship it. It is called, I'll find the name. I'll find the name while he's wrapping up and I will um I'll have that for you guys if that's okay. Thank okay. you for that question. Stay tuned for the answer to the toothpaste. Thanks for the question. Yeah, so back to cookware. Um another thing to be looking out for, um, I should tell you, sometimes we run hair analysis on people uh to figure out what's going on with them uh and to look at heavy metal loads. Um speaking of toxicity, that's very relevant. And one thing we find um with people is that they can have really high levels of aluminum. Now, where do you think that comes from? It comes from cooking on aluminum surfaces. So, Dr. Missy, I hear that, you know, Teflon cookware is a problem. Uh, aluminum cookware can be a problem. You know, this is what I, this is what I've been using for years, but what's, what's the alternative? What, okay. what, what, what do I, what do I do? I mean, help me out here. <laughs> you telling me about all this stuff is toxic. I'm, I'm overwhelmed now, but give me some answers. He's talking like somebody who cooks for himself. <laughs> I'll answer that. Okay, so you want to stick with your naturals, right? 
your common sense stuff. So that's going to be like with the glass or Pyrex. Uh, you're going to use your cast iron. So or your glass ceramic. is a better option than the Teflon. Oh yeah, or yes. plastic. You know, yeah. if you're heating better up in the microwave, use your Pyrex. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. And it's really just common sense. So guys, if it if it seems new and different, perhaps it's different in a bad way. You know, nonstick. I understand that's super convenient, but yes, it does come out of cost. So it says here that PFOAs, which is found in, in uh, some Teflon cookware, can cause childhood developmental problems. So does that mean that the, the cookware that we're utilizing can actually affect what's going on inside of my kid's body? Yeah, this is why we mentioned before that toxicity affects almost every disease process and even congenital. So we're, when babies are born with, uh, you know, genetic issues, mm -hmm. sometimes the DNA is damaged as a result of chemicals that the mother is exposed to, or even ones that she carried, you know, mm -hmm. these could have been a lifelong accumulation or ones that were dumped into her from her mom. But we do know that moms transfer toxicity to most of their firstborn, but all children. So another thing I'll tell you, we've been in practice for about 14 years now. And when I first started practice doing new patient evaluations, what I didn't hear a lot of was challenges with the thyroid. But in most recent oh, years, man, give me a man it, is, it is becoming rampant. Okay, let's and camp so, out so, on the thyroid. Can we do that? Sure. Okay. What I didn't touch on was fluoride. Okay, and fluorine, actually. So your thyroid makes thyroid hormones, and it needs iodine to do that. But here's what we need to here's what we need to clue in on. Iodine is very similar. I don't know if I have any chemists out there listening. Iodine is super similar to chlorine and bromide and fluorine. Okay, bromide you can get from brominated flour. That's a toxin that comes in our flour. Um, fluor fluoride and chlorine are in the water. So what happens when we drink highly chlorinated and fluorinated water? It's going to attach to the receptor site on our thyroid. The iodine cannot connect, therefore we can't produce normal normal levels of thyroid thyroid hormone production. Okay, so we have thyroid issues as a result of some of this, yeah. which can lead to all kinds of things. So the thyroid being off literally affects many, many things. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay, got it. So we have another question that just came in. The question is: Is my Brita filter not enough? Dr. Missy, you want to take that? Dr. Missy is the water expert here. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but I'm trying to be. I'm a student. So anything I have, I'll pass it on to you because I want you to know this isn't just a presentation. This is like we're trying to live this the best we can as well. Absolutely. We're being exposed to toxic things all the time. All the time. That's what we're saying. And so um, we'll go on to tell you, like, we do this detox regularly ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So is in, your in Brita filter... Doing, in fact, we're doing it right now. Yeah, we kind of started yeah, before started, you guys... We started a little bit early. Yes. So the reason why this one's going to be... Well, I will say this. If Brita is the best you can do right now, this is going to be better than anything you... You know, like, yes. Yes. This is good. But there's a better. There's always a better. It just really depends on... <laughs> everything that it always depends on, which is... You know, like how much how much money you want to spend. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and say it. How much you want to spend. Yes. So yeah, I've got my eye on a top of the line whole house system right now. You know, it's on my wish list. So, you know, step up. Anything is better than nothing. So just do what you can. And what you can do might just be, hey, I gotta detox three times a year because this is the best I can do with my bread up. Like you just make sure you're detoxing regularly, I would say at least twice a year. But if you have a high exposure, you know, you're working a job where you're being exposed to lots of chemicals. Yeah. Well, you might need to, you know, up it to three times a year uh, or even once a quarter. Got it. Thank you, Dr. Okay. So we're going to take one more question and then uh, or address rather one more question. Keep the questions coming, but we're going to address one more question before Dr. Missy finishes up with the top, top five toxins with mold and biotoxins. Oh, and I have a year on my so, so the question is, how much can we reverse these harmful effects? And I'll answer that, stay tuned. The answer is a lot, a, a tremendous amount. 
There's a whole lot that you can do, and we're going to cover that here in just a second. Mm -hmm. So make sure you stick around for the entire program because we're going to address that. Yep. The follow-up question that it is, what is the alternative if you are allergic to iodine? I would have to ask you if you're – see, most people have allergies when they're taking a supplement that it is not food-based. It's basically um, the answer to that. Like, if, if you're allergic to iodine – uh, like if you couldn't eat shellfish, for example, is that what we're talking about here? Uh, foods that are high in iodine even? Uh, then I would say, yes, we'd move to a vegetable source for that iodine and we provide it that way. Okay, thank you. Yes. If there's a follow-up question to that, send them in and Sheena will bring it up to us. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's finish up with the toxic top five. Uh, and the last one is the molds and biotoxin. How much of a problem is mold and biotoxin? Oh. It, they call it a stealth pathogen. So this is the new one that's being talked about all over scientific circles. It's because people are coming in with these really weird, bizarre symptoms that kind of run the gamut of severity and just different symptoms. No one's able to connect the dots with these symptoms. If you've ever known anybody who's been everywhere, I mean like Mayo Clinic, all this stuff, people go to these fancy doctors and no one can tell them what's wrong. A lot of times, the root can be mold and biotoxins like Lyme disease and some of these other things um, that are similar to Lyme disease, but they're affecting people. And people with Lyme disease, it's usually under the radar because a lot of people don't pick it up and you don't test positive all the time. Um, in combination with mold can really set and wreck an immune system, mm -hmm. okay? So what happens here is that the, the cause mostly, usually, is going to be a work environment or a home environment, indoor, mm -hmm. indoor stuff, where there's humidity problems. Right. So an indoor environment that's already two to five times more of a problem than an outdoor environment. Bang. Because you have to also look at, uh, you guys, guys, we have to keep a monitor on, um, on humidity issues. So like one great way to determine whether there's a humidity issue in your home is to look at your toilet bowl. If your toilet bowl has a black or gray ring around it uh, or at the water level, that's going to indicate you have some mold growth in your home. Okay, you want to make sure you're changing out your furnace filters. Uh, but number one, you're going to want to keep a hold of that um, humidity in the air. Diffusers are great too. Essential sure. oil diffusers will kill mold and biotoxin. So what are some, some signs of a sick building? So if you look at the bottom of this slide, a sick building will musty commonly smells. have yeah, poor heating, musty smells, challenges with ventilation, Re air conditioning system. Leaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look on your towel, if you see some brown spots on that, that's a indication of some form of a humidity problem. Yeah. So let's finish up with this and talk about the seven detox channels. So this is how your body naturally detoxifies itself without receiving some assistance through a detoxification um, program that we're going to be talking about today. And guys, just FYI, my son, my youngest son is in the background, so you may hear a little, bit, singing. Of, he little just bit of crying. Yeah, he's singing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the seven detox channels. I can see we have the skin, the lungs, the colon, kidney, the liver, which is a huge one, the lymphatic system, which is the body's garbage uh, trash system, and then fat cells, which is where a lot of these toxins are stored. Okay, great. Like say take skin, you know, for example, um, we sweat. So a lot of toxins will come out in the sweat. So what does that say? That, say we, that says we all need to be working up sweat to enhance that detoxification pathway in our body. Mm -hmm. Our lungs, right? Uh, we're going to cough up things when we experience poor air. Um, that's why we cough sometimes. It's a reflex to clear our airways of things. Uh, but again, here's one, here's one place where, yeah, we have to put a lot of pressure on that filter because like, for example, um, sometimes you cannot avoid toxins in your, in your environment right now and they're only getting worse. Um, but I should say, we didn't talk about asthma or any, um, respiratory diseases. Uh, they definitely are affected and worsened by household chemicals. Um, so we have to keep that conversation going about what are you using in your home as far as right. to maximize your lung, lung health. Um, colon, kidneys, liver, 
uh, all a part of your digestive tract. First line of defense. Well, yes, it is the first line of defense. So you want to make sure your digestive tract is healthy. One great way to do that is to detox regularly. And another one is to make sure you're taking your probiotics. Because the good bacteria are going to kill the bad bacteria. Right. Okay, and you want to make sure you're not, uh, you're eliminating on a regular basis, right? So if you have constipation issues, that's one way. Um, addressing those issues, you can instantly give yourself an immune boost and uh, allow yourself to rid, be rid of, of many toxins. And then last one are the fat cells. And what we know is that the body stores these toxins in the fat cells, which is why it's so critically important to have a really, really sound detoxification program if fat and weight loss is something that you're able to accomplish. Absolutely. So let's talk about the solution. So, so <laughs> the question was, is there anything we can do? Is there any hope that, that's out there for us? Yeah. The answer is absolutely. So what we're a fan of is the standard process detox balance program, which is a 28 day detoxification process. Dr. Mitchell, you want to talk about that? Oh yeah, it's whole food based. So what we're doing actually is not forcing a detox because some of the detox programs are really, really harsh and they just overload our pathways. We don't need to do that. We need to come in with a super genuine, uh, synergistic, uh, type program that's going to provide uh, the foods that we need in a package to help grab and pull the toxins and also keep them so they can make their way out. That's a really important piece. And some of us are suffering with leaky gut. The toxins get pulled during these programs, but once we get them in the digestive tract, we've got issues, we might have some elimination issues or we might have leaky gut and they just get reabsorbed. So we need that one-two punch. So the, the question here is, what is the best way to detox the lungs, kidneys, et cetera? Right here, we're talking about it right now. And she's gonna show you specifically in just a second how that actually happens. So doing a whole body uh, detoxification program through whole food supplementation, that's the key. Not synthetic because synthetic adds to the problem. Whole food, sub, whole food uh, detoxification is the way to go. Yes, because we need organic chemicals, supplements, you know, from foods, mm -hmm. from plants to help these cells throughout the entire body release the toxins that they've stored and, and let them go and, and, and send them all the way out. Right. Mm -hmm. So how does the liver play a role in detoxification? There's a bunch of jobs that the liver does. Uh, the liver is our filter. Mm -hmm. So as we take in, no matter what it is, it could be uh, exogenous toxins, endogenous, endogenous toxins, because we do make our own toxins. That's why we have a liver. We didn't just get a liver and a kidney when things got really bad with our society here. Um, we have that because we produce our own toxins as we uh, break down our own hormones. Mm -hmm. So if your liver is backed up because of exogenous toxins from, from your environment, you're not going to be able to do your own hormone thing. So you're going to have hormone issues. And that's where we get into fertility issues, menopausal problems, all kinds of stuff. So one of the things that, that we trained on earlier Sweet. earlier this week was uh, we were listening to a cardiologist, a world-renowned cardiologist, talk about a disease process that's coming on the scene called non-alcoholic uh, sclerosis, uh, cirrhosis of the liver. And what they're finding is that what's causing this is the rampant amount of toxins that's being that's bombarding the liver and leading the way there is, as we said, medication prescription and not. So the liver is taking a beating every single day, so it needs some help. So Dr. Nissi, does this type of a detoxification program address the attacks that our liver is, is facing every day? Yes, uh, to some extent, it kind of it kind of gives the liver a break while it's kind of cleaning it on the inside and forcing all that stuff out. Yeah. So kind of like scrubbing things out of it. Yes, yeah. and it increases your ability to move the things out. Because a lot of times we've challenged our liver because we have, we're dealing with constipation. Mm -hmm. When we have constipation, everything kind of literally backs up. Got it. So quickly, if you don't mind, Dr. Missy, sharing with us the effect of the, the lymphatic system, the colon, the kidneys, how does that play a role in detoxification? Okay, here again, we're talking about uh, mostly digestive. Right. Um, this is the way we take in things and the way we're supposed to move them out. Remember your alimentary track, it starts here and it 
continues and it has a way out. A lot of times it's not able to really move that. So this stuff is chock full of fiber and other things that help that continuous flow, mm -hmm. that great breakdown and continuous flow. And we're going to absorb some of the stuff in it. And we'll talk about it in just a second. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, the stuff in it that's going to allow those cells to release the toxin mm -hmm. and some of the other things to bind it and the rest of the stuff to help continue it out. So we know that there are things that God made and gave us that helps us keep our bodies well yeah. through the, food, the body. Food. Absolutely. So Hippocrates told us that a long time ago. So there are seven, that's the singing that we, that we want you guys to <laughs> So there are seven known toxin removers. Um, number one, fiber, pumpkin seed, beets. <laughs> like mom always told us to eat our beets. Apple pectin, Spanish black radish, globe artichoke. What in the world is that and where do I get it? Calcium citrate, burdock root, and milk thistle. These are all things that have been combined in this detoxification program that we're talking about tonight. And Dr. Missy, you wanna you wanna talk about that at all? Yeah. Those? Oh yeah. So these are all food-based, plant-based things. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, they're hidden gems within foods that we may or may not uh, you know. I find. can't tell you the last time <laughs> I had some global artichokes. Oh, I find it delicious. <laughs> it's so funny when you start to change your diet and lifestyle, some of these things become very delicious. Mm -hmm. oh, but nonetheless, uh, just in case they're not, they're here in a perfect ratio and um, combination that allows for that natural uh, gentle detox. Right. All right, so keep the questions coming, guys. And I'm gonna finish up with 12 things that you need to know to, uh, to be healthy. Okay, so if you look at number one on the slide, uh, number one is you are designed by God, by our creator to be healthy. Being sick is not normal, guys. After evaluating, literally, in my, my 14 years of being in practice here, after evaluating thousands of people, I have many, many patients that come in and, and, and think that being sick is normal. You know, my mom was sick. My mom had this disease, and my dad had it, and my grandma. I think it's just something that I'm, that I'm going to get, Doc. Well, that's not true. In fact, research shows us that anywhere between 5 to 15% of the disease processes that are out there are genetically based. That's a very, very small percentage. So what does that mean? That you can be healthy. Healthy is normal, sick is abnormal. Number two, the second thing that you need to know to be healthy, that your body is smart. Your body is very smart. There's an innate intelligence that runs across your nerves, that intelligence created your body and your body is designed to be well. The third thing that you need to know to be well, that that innate intelligence communicates across the nerve system. So what is the nerve system? Your brain, your brain stem, your spinal cord, and your nerves. Stay with me, guys. I'm going somewhere here. So the innate intelligence flows across the nerve system, and there's a uh, the nerve system is protected by a suit of armor, and that suit of armor are called your bones or your vertebrae, and they protect your nerve system. What's critically important, and this is how all of this ties into what we're talking about. Remember the next thing that I'm getting ready to say. Stress causes a condition called subluxation. So what did I say? Stress. Stress causes a condition called subluxation. So the question is, Dr. Missy, have we been stressed a tad for the last 13 months or so? Yes. In fact, there is 19.6 million antidepressants were prescribed from July of 2020 to September of 2020. 19.6 million antidepressants. Why are people depressed? Because of our current environment. Stress causes subluxation. Subluxation is a misalignment in your spine that causes dysfunction. Your body doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. Your life and my life is unnaturally stressful. So if I ask you to raise your hand, sure. right, who has been stressed in the last year, all hands will go up. Who has been stressed in the last month, all hands will probably remain up. 
Who's been stressed in the last week? Yeah, I see the hands going up right now. The world is full of stress. We are unnaturally stressed and stress causes subluxation. Subluxation is caused by stress. So um, if subluxation is caused by stress, and then here's how it all ties in. If subluxation is caused by stress, there are three stresses that you need to know about. And we're talking about one of them tonight. The first stress that I want you to know about is called thought. We call that mental and emotional stress. So those are things like job stress or my kids are going back to school stress or I'm glad that my kids are going back to school <laughs> anti-stress. <laughs> So we have mental and emotional stress. We call that thoughts. We have toxins, which is what we're talking about, the endogenous and the exogenous toxins. All of those things accumulate, a bile accumulate inside of our body. And that leads to dysfunction inside of our bodies. That leads to the subluxation that we're talking about. And then the last type of stress is physical stress. So a physical stress that has happened a tremendous amount in the last 13 months is sitting. We're sitting all day long, virtual work. Most people aren't standing, right? We're sitting, that's a stress. When you sit, that's five times more stress on your spine than when you're standing. So what's important for you to know is that subluxation is caused by stress. Now, number nine is, how would you know if you have a subluxation? The only answer is you get checked. You, get, you find a qualified chiropractor that is trained on how to, to detect subluxation and you get your spine and your nervous system checked. Number 10, the 10th thing that you need to know, what should you do if you have a subluxation? The answer is get specific chiropractic adjustments to fix your subluxation pattern. So what Dr. Missy and I, our mission at our office is to educate and adjust as many families as possible back towards optimal health. And we do that through natural chiropractic care. So not just adjust, but to educate. That's why we're here tonight, to educate and adjust as many families as possible. Number 11, we are on a mission to help our community. So Dr. Missy and I talk about this all the time. We have been blessed to have a wealth of knowledge. We've been surrounded by some really, really smart wellness experts for a very, very long time. We live this life. We live this lifestyle. We don't want to hold all this to ourselves. We, we vow to educate this community. So we're on the mission and we need your help to spread the word about the effects of all of these things that we talked about today. Any questions? I've got a keep, question keep, here. Keep the questions coming on, yes. What are the over-the-counter vitamins made of and are they hard on our bodies? Okay, let's address that one. That's a good question. Shot. Okay, over-the-counter vitamins, unless they say food-based, okay, are made of chemicals, again, with the chemicals. And why is that? It's, it's cheaper and it's easier. So a lot of the vitamins are made from like coal tar, and, um, petrochemicals it's yeah it's not food so we really need our vitamins in food form so that means eat a great diet that's full of vitamins uh, and help yourself with food-based support if you need more and most of us do need more so this detox program that you're talking about that you recommend to your patient that you do nutritional consultations with that's all food-based there, yeah. there are no synthetic vitamins no and the herbs I recommend are organic and grown in their country of origin where people have used them traditionally for thousands of years. So, uh, what am I saying? I'm saying eat your vitamins or take something food based. Okay, so keep the questions going. We're going to finish up here tonight. Um, Thanks for that question. And all sure. the other questions. So, warning signs that I, what I have on the screen here are warning signs of toxicity but not just toxicity warning signs of subluxation okay headaches frequent headaches or even infrequent headaches so i have patients that ask me this all the time doc is it normal for me to have a headache once a week no is it normal for me to have a headache once a month no when is it normal for me to have a headache it's never normal for you to have a headache you should not have headaches 
So having headaches, that's a warning sign potentially of subluxation and toxicity. Menstrual problems, high blood pressure, depression, insomnia, anxiety, sciatica can be from toxicity, neck pain, dizziness, and fatigue. You're tired all the time. Don't have sufficient energy. Acid reflux. I talked to a patient today at length about acid reflux, numbness and tingling and asthma. How about a re reduced libido or a reduced libido for your spouse? That can be a toxicity problem. It's not normal. Um, autoimmune disease, fertility issues. These are all warning signs that you could potentially be toxic. So what I want to do, how do I go back? Uh, okay, so what I want to do now is talk about what do we do? The question was, um, what is the best way to detox my lungs, my kidneys, et cetera? The answer is get a whole food-based detoxification program into your life. Now, I often get this question whenever we talk about this detox program. Uh, how often should I detox? You want to answer that one? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, I would say one great goal would be once per year. Mm -hmm. However, if you're more toxic, if you're exposed to things, we talked about that. If you know you live in a, hey, you work in a damp uh, work environment, there's nothing you can really do about that. You put a dehumidifier in your desk, but really you want to make sure that you have your health potential the way it should be. Yeah. I would say up to, yeah. you know, once so, every three to four months. So min minimum once a year. We like to, a, a, a really good rule of thumb that I like to use is detox in January and June, January and July, beginning of the year, mid-year, get your really good, good rhythm. Day. Clean the pipes out. Yeah. Okay. So if this is something that you feel that you found value in and you want to take the next step to take action, because guys, the reality is having all this information in and not doing anything with it is may not be the best option. So if you want to take some action, you it, we have the detox program here. It's uh, $256. If you want to take advantage of it tonight, or we'll extend this out for the next week or so, the next five, five days, all of next week, you'll get a 15% savings. That'll save you about 39 bucks. You can come in and get the detox program for $217. And I can show you how you can take advantage of that in just a second. And in exchange for the discount, please send in all the stuff that you can do better after it's over. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to take advantage as we finish up, if you want to take advantage of the full uh, whole food detoxification program, um, you can text to this number, 859 263 two seven seven four text this detox my life to eight five nine two six three two seven seven four if you'd like to take advantage of the detox program and then final thing that i want to talk to you about is how do i know if i have a subluxation i'm a chiropractor i've been a chiropractor for the last 17 years how do i know if i have a subluxation the only way is to get your spine and your nervous system checked so we have what's called the discovery examination, where we do a full chiropractic, uh, complete medical history, a consultation, examination. If we need some x-rays, we'll do all of that, as well as a report of findings where we explain all this information to you. Um, normally in our office, that's $285. And we have an insane, insane promotion going. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because we have this exact same promotion going on Facebook right now. 20 bucks. Come in, get your spine and your nurses and check, pay 20 bucks. In fact, we're going to give the 20 bucks to charity when you, when you, when you come in for the evaluation. Um, so we have a, a rolling uh, number of charities that we use. So come in, get your spine and your nurses and check. You want to, if you would like to take advantage of that, same uh, text line, 859-263-2774. Text this, check my spine if you'd like to take advantage of the $20 promotional offer. So, questions. sure, let's finish up with questions. All right, is there a way to get away from medications that you were told you that you were supposed to be on for the rest of your life, i.e. thyroid meds? So that is a question. Let me answer it this way. I have known people who have had questions or had issues like thyroid, um, 
who've been told they would have to rely on thyroid medications for the rest of their life, that uh, through actually detoxification as the first step, which is almost always the first step uh, when we work with people um, with existing conditions, um, or if they're like me, I'm just right now, I just had a baby looking for some weight loss. It's a good time for me to do this. Uh, starting off with the detox is a great way to at least see if, uh, if part of your thyroid problem might be a toxin issue. We talked about accumulated uh, chlorine, uh, fluoride, and bromine in the body that can shut a thyroid down. So, yes, I'm not giving you any medical advice. What I am saying is, I've seen it before. It's possible. So, so can I add in? I won't speak specifically to thyroid, but I will speak to conditions in general. Um, working in the office every day, I have seen countless people that have been told that they will take medications for the rest of their lives. And we used to have a garbage can in the corner where people drop their medications that they no longer are taking. So if that answers the question, not sure who asked it, but if that answers the question. We're designed to heal and to yeah. be resilient. Body so sometimes the body is taking very away smart. the interference, if it's toxicity or, or if it's providing a nutrient that you need that's not in your diet right now. Okay, okay guys, uh, any other questions? We'll hang around for another couple of minutes. Um, this has been, I've enjoyed it. I thank you for your participation and your question asking. If you would like to take advantage of any of the, uh, of the, the uh, detoxification, just text the, the number on the screen. You want to get your spine and nurses check. You want to get your, your family's spine and nurses check. Send the, the text over to us. Otherwise, we'll hang out for another couple of minutes to answer any other questions. If not, look out for um, the, next, uh, the next workshop. It will be coming soon. And we'd love to hear what you guys want to hear about. So send those tips in, too. Chat? Good questions. What's included? Oh, here we go. What is included in the detox? Okay, it is 28 days long. And uh, this bad boy is full of some of the things we talked about in the presentation. You'll get three of these. Um, and what that amounts to is, I think, three or four, day, four days of one shake a day. Then you go up to two, and you gradually get to three shakes a day. And then on the back end of 28 days, you taper it back down, and you end at one shake. Okay? So we're gradually ramping up the detoxification pathways, helping the liver and then we're tapering back off. And then it also includes a uh, very well-written instructions manual. With recipes. Uh, recipes and a shaker bottle. And then it also includes access to Dr. Missy to help walk you through the process. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Can children detox in the program? I've got my son. He's uh, 14. Um, don't tell him I told you, but he's going through some... Uh, Changes of life, <laughs> shall we say? Some hormone issues. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Squeaking of the voice. <laughs> right. So I thought it'd be a good idea um, to de yeah. tox tox toxic 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 load. He's detoxing with us right now. Yes. Toxic load and uh, you know just dealing with life and and the changes um, do have a connection. So I wanted him to be able to have some uh, some. How young can children be to detox? So here's the answer. This is food. This is food. All of this is food. The so only that, thing I would change is the amount. So yep. adults get two scoops. Uh, depending on the age of the child, I would titrate that back. Yeah. So the, the answer to that is whenever, whenever children can eat, th this is food. Which is one other great thing about whole foods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there another question? How young can children be? Is that it? Okay. And if you have any specific questions, you can totally text me. Sarah keeps my number and they contact me some uh, all the time for questions such as these. And someone says, thank you so much. This presentation was very good information. Very helpful. Going to share it with the hub. Yeah. Seriously, SP considering the SP detox. Great. Thanks again. Very good. Awesome. Go share it with the hubs. What's the 
the cost outside of the discount is $256. If you get it between now and next Wednesday, we'll even push it to next Thursday. Between now and next Thursday, the end of next week, we'll offer the discount of 200 and I don't have the slide, I think it was 217, mm -hmm. which is a $39 savings. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna jump on board with Dr. Missy and I, we've only been doing it for, when do we start, Monday? Oh, uh, I think we're four days in. Four days in. So if you want to be about just a week behind us, uh, we'd love to cheer you on. Absolutely. Good Thanks, night. guys. You're very welcome. And we'll check and see if this is recorded. Is this recorded? It may be. I'll have to ask my tech person, Ms. Sheena Strowman. We'll let you know. Send that question to the text, 859-263-2774, and we'll respond to the text. Thanks for the question. Cool. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Look Thanks out for, for the next, next talk, guys. Also, send us your suggestions of what you would like to hear about next. We'd love to write another program.